Okay, let's roll right into September, October. Uh, quick note, uh, roll for partisans. <clears throat> the partisan actually came up for India, of all places, and they rolled for a war with a Democrat for the Japanese-China war. Uh, the roll was a two, which is minus one because of JA6 being played, which is a one. And on a chart, that gives a minus one to U.S. entry for Japan. So, let's go and take a look at what starting money is for the major powers. Okay, starting money is Germany has three, Japan has zero, Italy has minus one, the Soviets have minus three, Commonwealth has minus four, France has minus three. Now, last turn I'd said that I'd made a error with the French money. <clears throat> I'm just going to leave it as is rather than dock them too because I'd also made an error with Japan that benefited them slightly so it, I guess it all balances. U.S. is at minus one and China is at zero. So I have uh, put in uh, the bids for the major powers and they're going to come out something like this. Germany bid one where the plus three equals four. Japan bid one with a plus two for her fifth position is a three. France bid one with a plus two for her fourth position is a three. And Italy bid one with a plus one for her sixth position is two. So what we have is Germany first, uh, Japan and France are tied, but the Japanese political effectiveness is higher than the French. Or is it? Actually, it's the same. So they're going to go in order. So the order is going to be Germany first, France, Japan, and Italy. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, Got the German marker here with a four. They're obviously going to be first. The French have got three. The Japanese have three. Come over here and look at this. The political effectiveness. The French, who used to be a two, moved up one because of the Czech rump uh, absorption by the Germans. So they're now the same. So the order for political initiative is going to remain the same. So the French are going to move into second. The Japanese are going to move into third. And the Italians will be fourth. The last card marker will be next to the Italians. Now, the major powers that didn't bid, we have the Commonwealth at a plus four, so that's going to put them at a fifth. The Soviets at a plus three, that's going to put them at six. And the U.S. and China in eighth, as usual. <clears throat> so let's go look and see what the Germans have an idea to do. Okay, Germany is going to try what she wanted to do last turn, but realized she couldn't at the last second. And so instead went with uh, recall Chinese advisors. Help both the Japanese a little bit, maybe. So this turn, <clears throat> Germany's in the first political position, so she's going to try influence. Okay, initiative position is less than minus willpower. Well, she's going to try it on Sweden, and if we look over here, we see that Sweden's willpower is a two. So her initiative, Germany's initiative position is one. That is less than two. So she will get to try to gain some influence. Now, the cost is, for getting the modifiers, is nine minus the willpower of the minor. Well, nine minus two is seven. So it's a pretty costly um, roll of the die, basically. So the Germans are hoping to actually get something out of this. So, here we go. Roll the die. Oh, look at that. Germany rolled a 10. So 10 for influence on Sweden is plus 5. So I'll put that marker out. So far, uh, countries that have tried to gain influence have had banner die rolls. Banner die rolls. To say the least. 
Okay, so there's no US entry, there's no minor effects. I paid the money, Germany gets to activate a minor. Let's go over to the status display. We're probably going to activate Sweden. And I think that's probably what we're going to do. So let me grab the markers for Sweden. Take a look at them before I grab them. That's what's in Sweden. We got a minus one Commonwealth, minus one French, minus two Soviet, and a plus five German. Seven bucks to gain five influence. That's pretty good. The other one was the Commonwealth trying to gain influence in Iraq. Well, they banged that out. They definitely banged that out. All right, let's put these out and see what we're going to do here. See how the order. I don't really think it's going to make much difference overall, but we'll take a look at it. Okay, <clears throat> here's where Sweden is. It's just on the cusp of entering the fascist ideology. So we got minus one for the French, it's not going to do anything. Minus one for the Commonwealth, it's not going to do anything. Uh, I think we'll activate the Soviet one next. That's a minus two, so that's going to move the marker in this direction. So we'll move it one hex this way. It's not enough to get here to move it down in the ideology of the, the fascists, so We'll move it that way. Now we'll use the five German. Okay, so it's two to go across. It's two to enter a hex. To move from one hex to another, it's plus one to go across a boundary. So that's going to be three to get there. Now, it's also two to get to this hex. And one cross the boundary however it's minus one moving towards you and your ideology so it's actually only going to cost two points so it puts the Swedish marker right there can you see where the German marker is it's right here Germany's almost got Sweden in their grasp well, that was definitely worth seven for the Germans. Now we'll roll a die to see if we end the political phase. If not, we'll move on to France. That's a six. Six, it does not end the political phase. We'll move the last card marker down one spot. Oh, down to France. Know what the French are gonna do. They got this thing called an election that they have to do. So they're going to play IPO 10, Government Falls, Election Call. Zoom in a little bit so we can read that a little bit better. Okay. Okay. Uh, this can only be played on Democratic major powers. You must either name your own major power or a major power that has a higher initiative position than yours. Not choose a major power that is war with another major power. Or major power does need to hold an election in the current election time frame. France has to hold one every single year. Or the USA, which is, you know, November of 36, 40, so on. Okay, this, it forces them to hold an election. If you play the option against yourself, you do not need to hold an election until your next time frame for an election comes up. Well, we're going to hold the French election right now. Uh, unless your election is late or you're forced to have an election or IPO 10 has already been played this turn, you must play IPO 10 to hold an election. Okay. Alright, so basically there's no U.S. entry. Got to pay one buck. One bank. Done. France gets to activate a minor. Don't really see a whole lot to activate for the French. Uh, well, the Netherlands 
has a lot of negative fascists, but it also has negative Democrat markers in it. Well, I think we're just going to activate Portugal and blow off this positive one German marker. That'll take care of that. Alright, let's roll the die, see if we end the political phase. If not, we'll move on to Japan. Let's see if I can get a few die rolls on camera here. Well, sorry, I rolled a two. So there's been one previous political option played. That was the German option. So it's a one to end the political phase. One minus one for the previous option played is as a, as a, a minus. So two minus one for the previous political option played comes out to be one. That's it for the political phase. Uh, Japan and Italy will get bonus bid points for next turn. I will roll initiative, and I will roll the weather, and then we'll come back with reinforcements. Okay, initiative roll came out as a 9 for the communists, a 9 for the fascists, and an 8 for the democrats. Oh, the communists have a plus 2, that's an 11, so they won, so they're going to go last. The fascists have a 0 modifier. So there's a straight up 9, and the Democrats have a minus 1 modifier, so that 8 becomes a 7. So the fascists thought, well, they were not really sure about the weather, but they figured that there's really not much that the Democrats can do over there against them at this point. So they decided to go in the middle, and the Democrats ended up going first. Well, the weather world ended up being a 9, okay? So... It's storm in the Arctic, rain in North Temperate, rain in the Mediterranean, rain in North Monsoon, and fair in South Monsoon and South Temperate. There's a plus one to the weather die roll for next set of impulses, and the impulse marker will move up two. All right, let's go and take a look at reinforcements. I think this might be a rather short turn, because if the weather's going to be nothing but garbage, there's really not going to be much to see. So we'll take a look at reinforcements. Better to put this. Okay, September, October. Sorry about the light glare. That's what it looks like without the light, but because I use uh, plexiglass on the boards, you get uh, a big time glare sometimes. Anyways, let's take a look at the reinforcements. The Germans have a weak infantry corps, they have a motorized division. They have a CAG, Combat Air Group, for carrier. And I think all those are going to go on the board. So I'll subtract one pilot. All right. Well, let's see what else we got. We got Oh, we got a convoy point for Britain, for Commonwealth. We have a convoy point for Italy. That should be enough so she can draw in the Portuguese resource. Convoy point for Japan. We have a heavy cruiser going in the construction pool for America. We have a heavy cruiser going in the construction pool for Great Britain. We have a tanker point for the Commonwealth. I use Great Britain and Commonwealth interchangeable. We have a Mountain Corps for the Communists, Communist Chinese. And we have a bunch of ships right here. We have the Spaviato. Of course, I'm probably not pronouncing these right. That's going to go on map. We have the Shokaku going in the construction pool. Very good carrier. The Gneisenau going on map. And the Enterprise going on map. All right, I'll get these on map, and we'll take a look if anything's going to actually happen, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, the Democrats in China. Um, <clears throat> I don't really see too much for them to move, basically because of the really poor weather. The North Monsoon is clear. No, I'm sorry, it's rain. So it's basically 
rain or storm in this whole area uh, it's really not gonna be conducive to move anything the only thing the Chinese are thinking about moving is taking this unit here and putting it here it's gonna flip the unit over okay they're kind of out of supply anyways but you know then that would give the Japanese a plus one here if the weather improves and it won't flip uh, I'm just gonna leave it I mean they'll kill it I'll be able to rebuild it as long as it take two turns yeah that's probably that's probably okay okay so that's it for the Democrats the fascists are up next and I think they're gonna have a 10 to 1 attack right here that's got uh, 11 there 9 there it's 20 to 1 even at half it's 10 to 1 so they're dead they're toast don't even have to roll a die uh, I don't really think I'm going to occupy the hex at this point because anything that moves there is going to flip over. And I don't want that. So that's it for the fascist turn. Uh, the Germans, I think maybe they're going to move one unit. They moved two units. They placed their builds in Kiel. And now they moved up to the Danish border. Well, I don't know why, but that's that's what they did. Uh, okay, so let's uh, so that's it for the fascists. Oh no, it's not it for the fascists. I got the Japanese here. Oh, that's it for the fascists. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's uh, move the marker up. Communists. We're just going to rail an air unit. I'm over by Persia. I'm going to rail it to uh, Kiev. No, I just leave it flipped up. It don't matter. Alright, that's it for the, the communists. Okay, I'm just going to run through the turn, and if anything happens, I'll break, and I'll record it. Okay, we're going to have some action. Uh, the, the weather roll for the next set of impulses was a 5, which modified to a 6. So it's rain in the Arctic, fair north temperate, fair Mediterranean, rain in north monsoon, fair south monsoon, fair south temperate. So I might have something happening over here, a little bit. There, that's better. All right. Um, well, I could move here, but I don't really think it matters. I think I'd better off to have the river here. At least that cuts down on their ability to kill it. Uh, so I don't really see anything. Democrats have to move here. They don't have anything to move over in Europe for the most part. Uh... Yeah, that's it. All right. Oop, this guy was supposed to go back home. What's he doing out there? All right. <clears throat> uh, okay, fascists are up. So let's stay right here in Asia. See what we can get. Uh, oh, it's a combined, obviously. We're going to move this guy here. Because we can. And this guy's going to move here and flip over. Oops, I don't want to do that. That's two moves. That's one. Two. Three. Well, those are my three moves. Oh, that was in ten ten. All right, I think we're going to do a ground strike. I'll try and ground strike this hex. We got two units. Let's see if we can get the die roll on camera here. 
All right. Okay, so the green die will be the top unit, and the red die will be the bottom unit. We're looking for ones. Well, nine and a three don't really cut it. So the A unit will go back home, flip over. Well, let's see what we got for odds. All right, we got, uh, there is six here. He's in range of Mao. So I got the seven, 15, 24, 36 to six. That's a six to one. And on the assault table, it's gonna be a five to one. Uh, obviously, I think I'm gonna use HQ benefits. And I think Ma was going to use HQ benefits, cancel the Japanese HQ benefits. The way that works, quick explanation is the the reorg value on the HQ. Which is this well, this number right here in the middle in parentheses. It's a three. So you take that number and you divide and you subtract the defending units number which in this case is also a three and whatever the total from whatever the difference between those two is you divide by four and you round and depending on which side had the larger that gives that side either a plus one or minus one so in this case it's going to be zero which is going to be a zero so that's going to flip Mao over. It's also going to flip uh, this guy over. But that's okay. Put these stacks back together. So we got a five to one. Five to one. No pluses. Could be bad. Could be good. Could be in the middle. See if we can get this on camera. Alright, Japan, five to one. No modifiers. Ah, that's a bad roll. Three. Five to one or three. Oh, it's not that bad a roll. Let's take a look on the assault table. A three. Five to one. Is this result right here? No losses for the attacker, one loss for the defender. Everybody's flipped over. In this case, it really didn't do too much other than flip all the Japanese units over. This means that the uh, ability to conduct offensive operations just came to a grinding halt. So the communists are going to lose this unit, obviously. He's going to flip over. And all the Japanese units are flip inverted. We're just going to kind of put a big damper on any more offensive activity in this theater. Okay, I think we're going to have some other fascist activity, and this is going to be in Europe. So let's move over there and see what's going to happen. I took a look at it, and I think it's not quite ready. Uh, the one thing the Democrats are doing over here is that they move this guy to here. That was it. Um, so that's it for fascist turn. I'm going to move up the marker. Okay, it's now the communist turn, I think. Oh, the fascists got to roll to see if they end the turn. If they end the turn. Uh, nine. 
No. We'll move on to the communists. They are not doing anything except moving one unit in China. And they will roll to see if they end the turn. And they did. Huh. What do you know? Turn is over. That was a rather quick turn. So I will uh, roll for U.S. entry for Japan. I will roll for um, partisans. And I will pick back up at production. Okay, production went something like this. Uh, Germany proves 15, started with 10, spent 10. Japan proves 7, started with 6, spent 7. Uh, let's see. Uh, this marker right here is supposed to be one pilot. I don't have any counters for it, so that's what that means. They built that, they built the naval air, uh, they pulled the Peter Strasser out of the construction pool and built an infantry corps. The Japanese. Built the pilot, the militia, combat air group, and pulled the Musashi out of the force pool. Spent a total of seven. Uh, seven, yep. Italy spent one convoy point. Oh, they produced four, started with two, spent one. The USSR produced seven, started with four, spent three. Commonwealth produced 11, started with seven, Spent seven on all this. It's a convoy point, tanker point, pilot, that's four. That's a free tag, because it's only two. It's four, that's one point for that. It's five, six. These two came out of the construction pool. Their second cycle, both zeros. And then two points for a fighter, so two. I'm sorry, spent eight. Commonwealth spent eight. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Okay. The United States. Oh, France. Uh, produced two, started at minus three, spent zero. Both France. Um, the United States. Japan and Italy all have gear ups coming in 1939, so that's kind of why they're not spending as much. All right, the Chinese, they produced five, started with five, spent four. So one for a cav division, one for a garrison division, and two for a militia corps, army, army corps. I'll get these on a circle. I'll get this turn put, these two turns put together, and uh, have them uploaded shortly. Thanks for watching.